Hi, it's Antelliquax here today and I'm going to do a little bit today on uh, how the computer works with numbers. So you might be aware that the computer stores numbers in different ways depending on whether they have a decimal part to them or a, or a whole numbers. So there I've asked it to store 5 as, or at least to, to, to consider 5 as a floating point number or a number with a decimal part. So even though there's nothing in there, it's given me about 5 point naught to say, yeah, okay, I realise that you want me to use a, use a float. So that's just something I wanted to mention straight away, and then we're going to do a little program. It's going to do some very simple things. So we're going to go for mass.py. Uh, let's just do some comments. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is say print. Just say that to the user, and then I'm going to do a couple of input statements. So I'm going to take two numbers from the user. And uh, it's pretty much the same again. Then I'm going to just do a nice little simple print statement which is going to put those together and you can do that quite easily in Python just by building up what you want to put. Num1 plus num2 equal, oops, equals and then num1 plus num2. Okay, save that. So now if I can run that program, so it's going to be for two numbers, so I'm going to go for 5 and 4, and it's going to come back with 54. Whoops. Now that is because the computer, by default, when you input something, treats it as a string, and it can't do maths on strings, at least not in the same way, it just bashes, puts them together. So one way I could do with that is I could say, okay, well what I actually wanted was a number, I wanted an integer in fact. And so give me an integer at this time. Turn that string into an integer. So if I do that, and now if I type in 4 and 5, it's going to tell me 9. OK, that's fine. Now one of the things that you need to work out when you're writing a program is what's going to happen if my user is a bit unusual and doesn't do things quite like I expect. So if I type in 4, oops, you know, that isn't going to work because it can't convert 4 into an integer very easily. And also, the way I've done it there, if, if they decide they want to add some things with decimals, then I'm also going to run into problems. So we need to add in what's called a bit of error checking here. So just to make life a bit easier for myself, I'm going to make num2 into a, a number to start with. <coughs> And then I'm going to try and do something with this to uh, actually avoid that problem happening. So I'm going to say try, which is a way that we can actually get the computer to try something out. And if it doesn't work, we can give it some other options. So I'm going to say try uh, converting. Let's go for float for now, because that's kind of safer. That'll deal with either. Um, try float num1. Whoops. Okay. So, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to go accept. And I'm going to go num1 equals float input. Okay, 
So I'll just start with a simple one. Okay, that's working okay. And as you can see, it's turning that five into a float, so it's giving me a, a decimal. Um, if I if I go with a number with a floating point element to start with, which gave me problems before, no, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, and if I go for this answer, it's going to say try again. And this time I've learnt my lesson and put a four in. Okay, so that's working, and uh, you know it's okay. But it might be neater if we could actually make sure that we only deal with it as a floating point number if we need to, and you know maybe uh, what if I actually made the same mistake again? You know if I did that, then it would still break. So let's just see what happens if I do that. If I type four. I'm really stupid. Okay, okay, six. You didn't like four. Maybe you like six. No, it's not going to do that. So what we need to do is just have something that's going to work a little bit better. Now, one way of dealing with this would be to write a little function. So I'm going to make a little function here, which is going to put called get number, um, and it's you know going to be. It doesn't have to take a parameter actually. Okay, so I'm going to try and deal with all of this stuff in a function. Okay. So I can get rid of that as well. I'm not gonna need that in really. Okay, so we're gonna go def get number, which is the way you define a function in Python if you haven't seen that before. And then I'm gonna put a doc string in, which is something which is good practice really. Um, So what that means is now that that is the description of what this function does, and you do the triple quotes there, just and that's the way that you can actually set up a doc string when you set up a function. So it's just the first line after you do your define the def statement uh, sets up a doc string. We'll look at that a little bit more later on. So what I want to do is I want to actually say, okay, um, let's go through that routine again that we did before. So I'm going to say input a number. Whoops. So let's go for uh, num, doesn't matter about the number in this time really, equals input, uh, give me a number, whoops, okay. Now what we want to do is we want to keep going, looping over until um, we actually find that the person has given us some, uh, something that we can work with. So there's various ways to do that actually. Um, one way we could do it is by saying while type none equals string. So what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, keep going if you've got a string. If you haven't managed to convert it into a into a floating point number, we need to keep going, or a, or an integer for that matter. So we'll start off with this with the uh, with the idea that we're going to go for an int if we can, um, and then we're going to see. Well, if that doesn't work, let's go for a float. Sorry. So after it's gone through that, um, in fact, that might break as well if the person hasn't given us a, a floating point number. So let's go um, try. So we're sort of nesting these now. Um, so if it isn't an integer, then we'll try a float. And if it isn't that either, then we're going to say, all right, try again. So if I've got that right, <laughs> that should mean that <coughs> it should ask 
keep asking me until I actually do something that, that we can deal with. So I've got my function there. So after it's done all of that, I just, there's one more thing I need to do, which is to actually return none. So that means that none, this, this number that I've got hopefully now, can be passed back to the main part of my program. So if I go num1 equals get number, and I go num2 equals get number, hopefully if I've done that right, oh yeah, silly me, two equal signs, two equal signs to test if something is equal to something else, one to assign a number. So give me a number. Oh. Let's just change that. But never mind for now. So let's go for hopefully something simple that should work. It's two plus two equals four. So that's fine, okay, good. Now let's just see if it still works if we try and um, fool it a little bit. So if we go one point two and two point four yeah, still happy, no worries. Um, and if I actually go really bonkers on it and go four, and then I try six, uh -oh, still wrong, and then that's yeah, still gonna work. So now what I've got there is, I've got something that's actually gonna deal with uh, some crazy things that people might type into my program. It's not gonna get, it's not gonna break, it's gonna keep going until it gets something it can actually work with. So, so basically, a little bit of error checking goes a long way uh, when you're programming. Okay, that's all for today.